Um, why Conrad? I, uh, well, Conrad is, is, is an obsession of mine, I think, basically because he, uh, um, his life is a, a, a sort of constant reinvention of himself, and that, that is something I immensely uh, respect. Um, he just seemed to uh, break up with any loyalties he had towards his country, towards his religion, towards his uh, what remained of his family, uh, towards his language, and he wrote in, the, in his third language. Um, these are things that I feel very much uh, uh, akin to, uh, um, and, and that helped me when I was when I was uh, debating if I should leave my country in order to become a writer. Why was that necessary? Why should I go to a place uh, whose language I don't even speak? As was the case with uh, with France when I when I left Colombia. Um, so. In a way, his biography has been very helpful, and his idea of the novel too. Uh, he has this idea of, of, of fiction as um, an instrument of knowledge, uh, something that uh, can be used to shed some light in dark places of our human experience, in dark places of our human history. Um, and uh, this has, uh, in a very definite way, shaped my own idea of what novels should do. So. Why did you feel it necessary to leave your country uh, to become a writer? Was it your yes. kind of reinvention? Yes, yes, and it's a very difficult thing to explain, and I don't really have rational, uh, you know, uh, clear uh, arguments uh, that this was necessary. But it's a, um, it's a, uh, it's a Latin American tradition after all. All the writers um, in that great generation were called the Latin American boom at one, one moment or another left their country in order to be able to write about their country. Um, I don't really know why that works that way and I don't uh, think it's necessary. I don't think if you don't do that you, you, you don't become a Latin American writer. Uh, but in my case I needed to widen my my perspective, my understanding of the world, my understanding of other traditions. I needed to contaminate myself a little bit with other literatures. Um, and this was the way of doing it. Okay, Juan, let's sum it up. You write novels, you write biographies, or not biographies, yeah. um, and you worked as a translator. Yes. You translated works by Victor Hugo and E.M. E. Forster. And I was wondering, um, how does it work? Do you have to which may be something in your mind and telling yourself, now I'm dealing not with my own fiction, with my own ideas, but with literature of someone else. Um, I mean, is it completely different or is it more, I don't know. There are obviously completely different uh, words, but they, they, um, they feed each other, or rather uh, a translation feeds uh, novel writing. Um, I can't do both things simultaneously. I, I usually translate for a while, or translate it when when I when I did that for a living. I don't do that anymore for a living. I still translate, but you know, kind of uh, what I choose to translate when I choose to translate it. Um, but I, I I translate for a while and then I go into the, the novel. I don't do it simultaneously. And the way it works. I, is that I've realized that translation is uh, the, the perfect way of reading. You cannot read a text in a more, in a, in a deeper way than when you read it to translate it. And in that way, it is the best writing school possible. Uh, and it's, it's when you translate uh, a, a good piece of fiction that you realize all the uh, all the wonderful things that a writer can do, and, and how and why do they do them? And when you when you translate bad books, you, you notice, you learn from that effect. You learn from the cheap tricks and the shortcuts and the and the and the, and the myriad ways in which a writer can can cheat. Um, so it's a great school, and it has. I, I think I have learned enormously from the books I've translated, good and bad. 
Okay, one final question. It's the beginning of May, spring is there. So are you going back to Barcelona, sit in the sun and forget your next project? Except for the part uh, about sitting in the sun, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's again a novel about uh, a certain part of a Colombian history that I think has universal implications and that I'm failing miserably at it. Okay. Um, which is good, you know, it's good when a novel uh, resists you. When things go too easy, it, it worries me. It, it, that means something is not right. I wish you all the best for your new project and it was very great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank, you. Thank you. On the inside cover of The Secret History of Costa Iguana, you will see that the Irish author column to being called Juan Gabriel Vasquez, a thrilling new discovery. And indeed, he is a new voice in Latin American literature. In his novels, he explores the dynamics between the great historical events and the personal history of individuals, the gray area between fiction and non-fiction. I really enjoyed reading The Informers as I could feel more and more sympathy with the exiled people who left their home country and became homeless again. And then there is Gabriel Santoro, stuck between his own life and the inherited past from his father, desperately trying to find the truth, but in the end he has to realize that in fact it is a journey towards the unknown. Thanks for watching, I've been Yinak Von and you've been watching Warwick TV. Oh,